The quotient rule provides us with a system for differentiating fractions, where u is the numerator and v is the denominator. So if we've got a fraction, we let u equal the top, so x squared plus 2, and we let v equal the bottom, so x plus 1. And to use the rule, we have to know what du by dx and dv by dx is. So du by dx will just equal 2x, and dv by dx will just equal 1. And we then have to place these parts into the quotient rule equation. So dy by dx will equal, well du by dx equals 2x, so it's 2x times by v, which was x plus 1. Take away, so always take away in the quotient rule, u was x squared plus 2, and dv by dx was a 1. And this is all over v squared, which is x plus 1 squared. The next step is to make this simpler where possible. We always leave the bottom factorised where possible. So dy by dx will equal. So we can expand this. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Take away x squared times 1. And take away 2 all over x plus 1 squared. We can make it simpler, so we get 2x squared take away x squared, so we get x squared plus 2x minus 2 all over x plus 1 squared. So that is the fraction differentiated. The second one then looks a bit more complicated bit more to it, but we have u and v. So u is equal to root of x, which I'll write as x to the power of a half. I'll now work out du by dx. That will be a half x to the minus a half. Then v will equal x plus 5. So dv by dx will just equal 1. We must now put all these bits and pieces into the quotient rule equation. So dy by dx is equal to... So du by dx, which is a half x to minus a half, times by v, which was x plus 5. Take away u which is x to the half, times by dv by dx, which is just 1, all over v squared, which is x plus 5 squared. The temptation now is to cancel off the x plus 5s. Well, you can't do that, because it exists here, but not here. It's not a factor. However, we can deal with this in quite a nice way. And the whole thing then becomes a bit simpler. Now then, Here's what I do. Now, there's a half here, but not here. So I force in an over 2 to make it the same. But obviously that changes it, so I put a 2 on top as well. So 2 over 2 cancels out, the way it were before, but it puts a factor of a half in. You'll see why in a moment. I then look for similar terms. They're similar. And then write the larger power, in this case the plus a half, as the smaller power, which is negative a half, but obviously it's plus one. Negative a half plus one is plus a half. Now then, you may think, well what's the point of doing all that messing around? Well here's why. 
If I now try and factorise this, then there's a half there. So I can pull a half out. There's also an x to the minus a half, an x to the power of minus a half. So that's also a factor. Then I'll put a big square bracket, and I'm left with an x plus 5 minus a 2 and an x to the power of 1. Just an x. The 1 there we can ignore. Then it's all over x plus 5 squared. And we're almost there. So to finish off with, the half joins the x plus 5 squared. The minus power also goes to the bottom. So I get a big fraction line. I've got the 2. I've got the x to the power of half. I've got the x plus 5 squared, and on top I've got x plus 5 take away 2x, which is just 5 take away x. And that function has therefore been differentiated.